you know, my my mom has the story of hiking with this forest ranger, and um, he was talking about cleaning up a forest after a forest fire. And my mom would hike with him every day, and he would tell her stories. And one of the stories was of he found this this petrified female hawk. Mm. She had been petrified by the forest. Her wings were spread open. And when he lifted her up, there were three live baby hawks behind her. Wow. And she had sacrificed herself so that they could live. And I always, I was so struck by that because that's maternal instinct. Yeah. You know, we will do whatever to shelter our children from what, from anything that might harm them. Yeah. And that just reminded me of what you were talking about with your mom. Like she just straight was going to make it through for your sake. Yeah. I and mean, she almost lost her life because of that too. Yeah. I mean, this is the man that, you know, and, when you, you'll see in the book, I had, you know, it was crazy is growing up, I don't know if I knew much better because I had love for this man. And he was abusive to my mom, but he loved me like I was his only, like I was his own child. He raised me. I, I was born James Michael Maxwell, right? So my name now is James Michael Hill. Everybody calls me Mike. His last name was Hill. He adopted me when I was 14 years old. So I took his name because my biological father wasn't around. It's a long story, but, but he loved me as if I was his own. Like he never looked at me like I was his stepson. And even though he was going through or taking my mom through all this pain, I was, I don't know if I was more mature at the time or whatever, but I would talk to him like, you know, this is wrong, what you're doing or whatever, and trying to talk to him because deep down inside, I, I, deep down inside, I saw that he had a, he had a good heart kids and animals loved him to be quite honest you can ask my mom that he had a lot of friends or whatever but for some reason he was just a, a person who was raised a certain way uh down south um saw what his people in his family did you know what i'm saying i'm not trying to you know put blame on them or whatever but he didn't know any better and he didn't realize what abuse was, mental or physical abuse. And, and he, you know, but that's the way he felt like he could control my mom. And so I would try and talk to him, try and say, look, you know, this is wrong. You can't do this or whatever, because I saw the love he had for me. And, but he was a troubled person, an alcoholic, a uh, person who later in life I found out, you know, committed crimes, you know, killed people. You know, he, he was a hit man. I mean, so it's like, yeah, I found that out when I was, I came back home from the military, you know, and I knew that he had killed somebody before. And I knew that when I was in the military, he had killed someone while I was in the military uh, in the Philippines and got this phone call late at night or whatever saying that, you know, Richard has killed this guy, you know, self-defense, whatever. He was at some woman's house and her boyfriend came or whatever. What's he doing there? My mom's, you know, home, whatever. And, Guy came and started hitting him or whatever. And he pulled on him. He got self-defense. Probably was not self-defense to be honest with you, but it was a case of the police not really caring because he killed somebody they didn't care about. Right. In a sense, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's basically the bottom line. What it was, if you look back on it. But all, despite all of that, I wanted to try and save this man because I knew deep down inside there was a soul. Yeah. And I wasn't. Unfortunately, I was never able to do that because. When my mom left him, you know, he went into a deep spiral, started doing drugs, it was cocaine, crack, you know, uh, he was always an alcoholic or whatever. And I tried to love him from afar or whatever, but when you see someone self-destructing and you're trying to better your life, sometimes it just brings you down. Yeah. And it's stressful on you and I'm trying to raise my family and I'm going through a lot of things myself. And one day I get a call saying that, uh, from the police saying that he's, he's you know, we're gonna lock him up because he had gotten remarried. And I know uh, the woman that he married was a beautiful woman. Her name was Mary. I called her Mama Mary. She was a sweet lady. She loved him to death or whatever, despite his flaws or whatnot. And uh, she tried to leave him because he was abusive to her too. And he was really jealous. And Mary was working at the church that his brother-in-law was the minister of a big church in Bessemer, Alabama, really popular, everybody knows this church or whatever. And he, she was working there, and when she left, you know, he was threatening her like he was threatening my mom when she left as well. 
And uh, so he hired somebody to kill her. And so one day she's working at the church, guy rolls up on a bike and says her name. She turns around on the church ground, pow. No. Yeah, shot her in the head and killed her. And dro drove off and then later, you know, they catch him of course and he's, you know, he tells and says, you know, Richard hired me to do this or whatever. And so they locked him up. <laughs>